were you aware of Jake E. Lee before um, he joined Ozzy, like in the L.A. area? Yeah, I went to a party. I, I didn't live in L.A. yet. I was in Surgical Steel, and we came over to drop the masters of our song that ended up on Metal Massacre 2, the song Rivet Head that I wrote. And um, I met a couple guys that I had become friends with. Uh, we had been in a couple of small fan magazines, and so these guys ended up searching us out in Phoenix and knowing that Halford came and played on stage with us and stuff. They came out to L.A. to see if that was true, and of course it was. So I ended up becoming friends with them. When we went to L.A. to drop off the master, they took us out that night to the, it was called the last night of the whiskey. And the whiskey closed for a few years in the 80s. And uh, it was uh, Black and Blue, who still lived in uh, Oregon at the time. And then Steeler with Mitch Perry playing guitar. And uh, Rat. And Mark Tureen was playing guitar and rap then. Yeah, they didn't have Warren yet. And Tureen... You know how he kind of does the uh, Van Hale, uh, the uh, David Lee Roth thing when he's singing? Sure. Well, he, he did the friggin' Eddie Van Halen thing, man. He was really a good guitar player in that Van Halen style, and he kind of had some of the same stage moves. He's very entertaining. I know Mark, Mark's a crazy guy. We go way back. But he's a very talented guy. But anyway, um, and Black and Blue was really good. Steeler was really good. And Rat came out and just friggin' killed it. They were amazing, and I was like going, oh, my God. And I was just in some Arizona band, Surgical Steel. We didn't have to play with bands like that. And these guys were professionals, and we weren't that professional. We were still kind of goofing around on stage and talking in between songs and acting stupid. And you go out and see these three bands, and it was just like, holy crap, we got to come out here and compete with these guys, uh, which is how I got kicked out of the band, like I told you before, because I wanted to do it, but they didn't. So anyway, they had a party at the Whiskey upstairs, and so my uh, two friends brought us back there, and they were pointing out who everyone was. That's such and such. That's blah, blah, blah. So uh, Jake came, showed up to this party, and my roommate, the guy ended up becoming my room, one of my roommates, Glenn, said, that's Jake Williams. He's the best guitar player in L.A. And I was looking at him, I was going, oh, okay, um, I'll remember that. So when I eventually moved to L.A. after I got kicked out of Surgical Steel, um, when I moved to L.A., I went to uh, Madame Wong's West and uh, to basically meet Piercy. And uh, because Robin Crosby, they were, I told you they were auditioning bass players for Rat, and Robin wanted me to audition. So he said, I want you to go to Madame Wong's with me and meet Steven. So I went and I met Steven, and it was cool. And... Uh, he said, uh, how good are you? I said, better than the guy you have right now. And he looked at me, he goes, be ballsy. I said, yeah, well, got to take a shot. And so I ended up getting the audition. But long story, slightly longer, Rough Cut was playing. And uh, Jake was in Rough Cut. And the power went out. And uh, the only power they had left was Jake's Marshall. And so the drummer, Dave Alford, he's a great drummer, and Jake played for about 40 minutes, just the two of them, without anyone else playing while they tried to fix the power. And I was like sitting there with my jaw on the ground. I'd never seen anyone do anything like that. And he was flat out the best guitar player I'd ever seen. I was stunned. I thought, oh my God, this is this guy is incredible. He was going through all these different riffs and styles and time signatures, and the drummer was right there with him. It was very cool. And so... Um, a couple months later, I was going into the Troubadour. They used to have to have a line to go in there, and I don't remember who I was going to go see. And Jake was sitting in the front bar of the Troubadour with his uh, girlfriend, and I was in line, and I stepped out of line, and I said, uh, Hey, Jake, I said, I saw you play that night at Madame Wong's when you know, all the power went out. He goes, Oh, yeah. I said, That's the greatest thing I've ever seen musically. And he goes, Oh, well, thanks. And so I knew who he was. And like I said, when, I would, when Sharon called me to audition for Ozzy, I'd heard he wasn't in Ozzy anymore. So I didn't want to go. I didn't know who the guitar player was. And my main reason for wanting to play with Ozzy had nothing to do with Ozzy. I wanted to play with the guitar player I saw at Madame Wong's West that could blow for 45 minutes and not repeat himself without a bass player or a singer. It was just him and a drummer. It was, I can still picture it to this day. It was amazing. Mark's in Rat. And then, I mean, Jake comes in Rat. I'm assuming Jake comes in after Mark. Into no, rat? Jake was in. Jake was in before Mark. I think Jake was in it in San Diego. I don't recall if he was actually in Rat in L.A. He could have been, but maybe just for a short time. And then um, 
Mark, they had, I think they'd had some other musicians in the band as well. All I know is when I saw the band, it was Robin, um, Juan played bass, uh, Bobby was playing drums, Steven, and then Tareen. Tareen was really good. I mean, and then I believe, I could be wrong, that might have been his last show. Because when I eventually, a few months later, because this would have been in like maybe August of 81, in the early, like in the winter of 82, is when I went and auditioned for them, and Warren was in the band by then. So I don't know how many more gigs Mark did, and I don't know what the particular problem was, why he left. And uh, I just know that when I went and auditioned for the band, uh, Warren was in the band, and he was like 19 years old, and he was really damn good. Even at 19, like, pretty good. I yeah, was like, that's what I thought, is that Jake was the one that kind of connected Warren to Rat. Yeah. And then, I mean, didn't Warren, like, take lessons from Jake? I believe that's the story that I had heard, is that at one point, Jake had, I don't know if they took lessons or if Jake had just kind of showed him stuff, because they always kind of called Warren Jake's little brother. I know they're really tight. I know they still are. And um, Warren's a hell of a player and a super nice guy. And um, he fit in perfect with that band, obviously. Oh, yeah. I think with Mark, uh, Mark really had a serious Van Halen bent going on as far as a player. And Warren, uh, while he's a shredder, I don't think Warren plays like Van Halen. No. You know what I mean? I'm not no. saying he doesn't I... have some of the... Who I always thought he kind of reminded me of was George Lynch. I thought they had kind yeah. of a similarity a little bit. Yeah, they do. They do. I always liked Warren's tone better than, than George's. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I didn't really care for the tone on the early Dawkins records. I always liked uh, Warren's tone on the Rat records. <laughs> <laughs> 